Right. Good evening, traders. Uh, I hope you are enjoying wherever you're getting us from. And today we are presenting to you um, the economic calendar, how to use news and reports um, and fundamental analysis to try and make your, um, your trading better or even more informed. Um, hey, Sam, you're good today? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm seeing someone saying Team Senegal. <laughs> yeah, you have someone here yeah, reminding us about the World Cup. Yeah, we have Senegal already playing. Um, yeah, we'll catch up with that later, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, then. So um, just go straight to what economic calendar is. With me here, I'm sharing the economic calendar, which you can find on our website. So just to start us off, we have got two yeah. types of, actually three types of analysis. We have the technical analysis, um, the fundamental analysis, and even sentiment analysis. Technical analysis is where a trader looks at um, the movement of prices, you use price action, you can use indicators to analyze the markets to try find the direction where um, we might be getting a movement. And um, in addition to the technical analysis, a trader also wants to understand the events that are behind the economic events that are behind the gaining of value or losing of value of um, a given currency or even um, an asset or a stock. So all that you'll be able to find it um, through fundamental analysis. And this is all the news and reports that pertain to um, economy or politics. Yeah. So. Yeah. So today we will focus on the economic calendar because that's where you can find the news, okay? Because sometimes the traders can wonder, where do I get all those news? Do I have to keep watching the CNBC? Do I have to keep on watching um, all these um, well-known um, global news channels? No, we use the economic calendar and um, for the corporates use the corporate calendar. That's where you have events, key events that are likely to cause changes in value or volatility in that given asset and you able to analyze it. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to the economic calendar, you can find it on various websites, although even at FX Pesa platform, when you go to the portal, you can find it. Maybe Sam, you have something to share with us? Yeah, I'll just follow up the conversation with the way you've left it. So as you've mm -hmm. said, the, 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 three types of analysis. And one of them is a uh, technical analysis and the other one is fundamental analysis. So if you if you think about it, if you if you took trading, like attempting to predict the weather, then technical analysis will be akin to looking at patterns in the previous days. For example, if uh, yesterday it was raining and the day after that it was raining, then you can say tomorrow, there might be a chance it's going to rain because you've, you've observed a pattern over the, the past two days. That's technical analysis to you. You're trying to look at how price is behaving. And then there's why price is moving the way it's moving. And that's now fundamental analysis. So there's the how price behaves, and then there's the why price is moving. So when it comes to fundamental analysis, you're trying to attach reasons to what you think the market should do. So most of the times movement in the market can be affected by a number of factors. And the biggest driving uh, factors is usually the macroeconomic situation of any, any given uh, currency or uh, a commodity or asset or security. So in this case, a good place to, to look for news will be an economic calendar because there are two types of uh, news releases, if I may put it that way. There's the predictable ones, the scheduled uh, news announcements, and then there's the unscheduled news announcements. So those ones you'd probably look into breaking news events and and, and such uh, types of uh, stories. But then it's more chaotic to trade because you never know when the next big thing is going to, to occur that's going to move the markets. For example, you have the whole FTX and Binance situation that is affecting the crypto markets. That's something no one, a few might have claimed to have predicted, but that's something <laughs> no one was expecting. Yeah, and then you have what you can actually plan or you can use your week to come and plan and see these are the news events for this week and they're going to move the market in such a way. So that's how you use the economic calendar. We have uh, 
factors or activities that affect currencies and we have other announcements that affect stocks and we have a whole mix of uh, announcements that affect both or cut across a lot of asset classes so this is a good starting point even if you're a technical trader you'd want to take note of when you have a high impact events and i think Ma matthew can start describing uh, what you mean by high impact low impact and medium impact news as you go on sure yeah sure sure so the, the news are categorized into three so you can have we have the news that um can cause a very high volatility in the market such that when the report is released depending with the outcome it can um, make that instrument or asset lose uh, value very fast or get um have a rise in value very fast and what happens in that case is attracts a lot of sell off strong sell off or uh, or strong or high buying in the market. So that's high impact. Medium impact are uh, new species that um, you cannot ignore, but some. But again, they're not really very important. Okay, you can't ignore, but at the same time, you you also have to take note of. So once those news uh, news events are released, then you need to take note of them. They can either make the market uh, they can make the market have some moderate volatility but sometimes also depending with how the 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 reports come up it can as well turn up to be um a, a market moving a high market moving event low impact they actually do not have um as much do not cause as much volatility in the market so mostly traders uh, ignore the low impact and move on to highlight or take note of the medium impact and high impact. So yeah, those two categories, they are uh, marked in different, uh, with different, um, but they are marked differently when you look at the, uh, the economic calendar, yeah, such that you're able to identify the high impact events and the low impact events. For example, when you're looking at the economic calendar, which is um, on the FX Pesa platform, you will find that it is marked in, um, is it is it red? Yeah. And the medium yeah. impact is in some gray. Okay. Yeah. Um, before we move on to look at uh, other parts where we can find um, news, I think I would want to highlight where you can find news for the ones who have got the FX PESA um, uh, app already. So you're able to get this market calendar um, if you have the if you're able to log into your portal. Check on the analysis section. Look on the left side of, 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 of the screen. You can see we have on the analysis session, there are several other uh, tabs you can find. You can find research terminal, there's market calendar, market news, technical newsletter, and the signal center. So today we're focusing on the market calendar. So on the FX Pesa platform, on the analysis section, you're able to see um, various tabs and part of the tabs the economic calendar we even have the corporate calendar but today focus more on the economic calendar so i was talking about the high impact medium impact and the low impact so mostly traders will focus on the high impact and medium impact because they are likely to move the markets once the reports are released for instance tomorrow if i click on for tomorrow news you can see here there is the date tuesday 22nd on wednesday we have the date there for wednesday 23rd thursday move moving on that way if you scroll uh, on the left you can see uh, see the pieces of events that are lined up so let's check for example tomorrow we've got um low impact and high impact and medium impact as well all of them the low impact is in green medium impact is in gray and the high impact is in red is it red or maroon but they are given different colors so you can note them uh, easily yeah for example let me select the high impact here and so i was uh, trying to filter out the events that someone can or the traders can use for example for tomorrow you can have the high impact event here for the uk public sector finances so you can click on it and see more details about this event so we will have this event it is uh, coming up 13 hours in the in 13 hours time the next one coming up in um 
yeah, around the same time. And when we talk about public finances, then there's a little bit of an explanation here on what it is. Um, as traders, what you look at when you want to analyze the market is the data which is given. There's the previous data, the forecasts, and the actual, right? So if you do not analyze the, the, the data, then what you can do is look at the previous data, compare with the forecasts, but then when the actual data comes up, you compare the forecast with the actual, but again, you might want to look at how the previous was um, to, to get a better idea of where the asset might be moving. Then something more interesting about the FX PESA um, economic calendar is that you're able to know the, asset, the assets that will be mostly affected. One of the challenges that traders have is um, knowing which instrument now can I focus on? Yes, I've got this event on public sector, sector finances, which asset can I focus on? And here, this particular economic calendar helps you to know that you're expecting some volatility on pound USD, and then um, and you have FTSE, which is UK 100, that's an index, um, EU 50, Euro pound, uh, pound Australian dollar, pound card. You can see those instruments there that you can focus on so you're able to take advantage. And a little bit of history comparing how the forecasts and um, the actual release um, have been over history and how does it actually affect the, um, how has it affected the market after the release? This can help you to try anticipate the likely direction of um, the market. So before I invite you, Sam, to give us your views on um, using the economic calendar, I would want to mention there are two approaches to using economic calendar. Yeah, As a trader, you either know that there's an economic calendar or you do not know. So for someone who do not know how, whether there is an economic calendar, then you likely to find high volatility in the market and you don't know why it's happening. Most likely those traders will, um, will, will have difficulties maybe in risk management, yeah? Because in first place, you didn't know whether there's an event coming up. There's another trader who knows there's an event coming up and then they're going to use it in different approaches. You are either going to take advantage of the volatility and in that case, place trades and you're able to get profits or you can use it as a, in a, as a risk management, in a risk management approach where when the um, high volatility events are coming, coming up, you give them time, the surprise move already comes up and then after it is dissipates, because the volatility dissipates after some time, you use um, other patterns in the market or your indicators to find um, entries. My advice is it's always good to know that there are events coming up, whether you want to take advantage of the market or you know how to trade their strategy or you don't know. Because once, once you know, even if you don't have a strategy on how to trade um, on such high volatility events, yeah, the news, you don't have a news to use, uh, you don't have an ev um, a strategy to apply during news, then you can use it um, at least to avoid that high risk which comes up uh, with a big move, yeah? So Sam, share something with us about the, the economic okay, calendar so, as well. So, so um, I think you've covered a lot um, mm -hmm. when it comes to it. So there, there are two things. You're either trying to trade the news or you're trying to avoid the news. And if you're trying to trade the news, then you have three options. You can either trade before the news, trade during the news, or wait for the news impact to, to, to occur. Then that's when you trade. So sure. when it comes to trading before the news, you're really looking at trading expectations. The market tends to move in some type of way when people are expecting something to happen. For instance, if I'm a land investor and I want to buy land and I hear there is going to be a road somewhere, then prices are going to 
uh, increase in value even before that road is built or even before the announcement that a road is there that's going to be built. Okay. Yeah, so when you decide to trade the news, then mm -hmm. you need to look at a number of factors. Number one, does the market care about the news? Um, we used to have this discussion between uh, talking about between NFP and inflation, which one is more important. And till of late, NFP has usually been the biggest uh, news event when it comes to traders who trade news. But then the entire course of this year, we've had inflation being the biggest or the major event. So one thing you need to find out is, does the market care about this event? And what you can do, you can go to past news releases and see how the market reacted. Do you have an instantaneous push or a move? And then after that, it died out, died down. Did we have a move that lasted a couple of days? Because sometimes we do have such uh, news items that last you one or two days. Or did we have no impact at all? So once you've assessed yeah. the importance of, of the news itself, the news release, then you can go to the next step and see typically how many pips or how many points does the market usually react to such news, news uh, events or news releases. And in this okay. case, what traders do is you try to compare your expect the difference between your expectation and your actual event. I'll give an example. Uh -huh. Let me go back to the to the land example. If I was intending to buy land, maybe in Rongai, <laughs> with the expectation that one road was going to be built, of course prices would have reached somewhere. But then the day of the announcement or the day of the groundbreaking, they announced that they're going to have maybe two or three roads then you, you're going to see that uh, prices are going to shoot even higher because the actual news item and what was expected is a difference. So that deviation between the actual and expected, that's why you have that uh, line graph showing the, the actual and expected because those deviations also, also matter. If what was predicted and what is happening are, are far apart and if the news is really important, then we'll get a really High, uh, a huge reaction in the markets. And if the news was really important, but what was predicted was what is actually happening, then it means traders have already positioned themselves and there's no major reaction or the, the reaction might not even be sustainable. So those nitty gritties you need to know when it comes to trading, especially if you're attempting to trade during the news or after the news. Even uh, when trading after the news, you, you need to go back to the previous releases and see after this huge spike in the market, did the market reverse? Did the market continue going higher or lower? And those uh, characteristics of each uh, item help you or guide you on what to do. Because people usually tend to, to gamble away when it comes to news because you don't know what to expect. But if you look at enough, uh, if, for example, you go on CPI data and look at enough uh, data points, then you can see that there is actually a pattern that you can observe during these announcements just by comparing. So a trader can prepare themselves to trade the news very comfortably if they practice uh, for a good amount of time. And then if you do not want to trade the news at all, then these are good times to just avoid the markets, uh, just watch how prices are behaving. Then after you're sure the impact has died down, can go back to your technical analysis. So in a nutshell, that's what we have when it comes to, to news trading. Yeah, thanks for that. And um, maybe say that um, the safest way of trading with the news is just waiting for the news to be released and then um, find an approach. Maybe there's a pattern which is formed for continuation or maybe there's a gap which has been created and it has to be filled, right? So yeah. we, ha we have tons of patterns, inside bars, yes. uh, mm -hmm. continuation patterns. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's it's always good in as much as you want to, it's really thrilling to see that move. But unfortunately, mostly when we have high impact events, that's when you have guys um, uh, getting stopped out or as it is known commonly blowing accounts because exactly. you, you 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 those are times that people now start getting greedy okay exactly. and people start forgetting about risk management actually um you should you should in a in a in a very conservative way you should be looking at news as um or news events 
as warning for high volatility. And you know, high volatility will come with opportunity and as well yeah. high risk. Remember, as a trader, for you to remain longer in this game, you really need to manage the risk. Okay. Be really keen on managing the risk. Yeah. Um on on, on in another way uh, or in another approach for someone who does not want or not able to use the economic calendar on the FX Pesa um, app, we we can find other calendars from other websites in different um, designs though, or different presentations. If you just Google economic calendar online, you find several websites offering them. And what you need is just to know how to interpret them. What you need to look at is what is the impact of the event? Yeah. Filter out high impact and medium impact. And then what you'll be looking at is just um, the readings where you have uh, the previous, the data on the previous um, previous report, what is the expectation, and then the actual data which is coming up. So long as you're able to know those pieces of data, then you can use any economic calendar. But for this one, you're able to get a little bit more details, especially on even the, the, the previous moves that we've had, the history, a little bit of it, and the assets that you are expecting to be affected. It gives you more focus on um, what you can trade as, um, as a result of the high impact event. Yeah. In addition to this, we even have the corporate calendar for the guys who trade stocks or the ones who are interested in, in trading the stocks. All these are showing um, different pieces of information. We have got earnings, dividends, calls and webcasts, stock splits, uh, IPOs, mergers and acquisitions. You can find all this data and this will refine your trading uh, information when it comes yeah. to the the stocks yeah i think i think one one popular one popular strategy i saw a group of traders uh doing some time back was in uh stocks when it came mm -hmm. to um bio bio biomedicine uh, medical mm -hmm. technology uh, companies like pfizer and uh, moderna usually mm -hmm. they have research they, they do a lot of research on uh, new vaccines and new you know, ways to treat people. So whenever they announce they've discovered something new, you find that their stock tends to uh, spike up or something like that. So you have an entire group of guys I met that just focus on uh, biotech stocks. And it's usually a very interesting, uh, especially when it comes to, to corporate, it's usually very interesting to see how stocks react to obtain, uh, news uh, events. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Great addition. So maybe we can look at a few questions here. And um, hey, Simi, Simi is saying, uh, is asking about whether we can cover a live trade on journaling. Yeah, a live on trade journaling. We consider that topic. Thank you so much for your request. Um, Evans is asking, Evans is asking, is it FX Pesa or FX Pesa Trader? So I don't really get it because once you log into the FX Pesa app and you go to the to your portal, that's where you can see this insight section. Yeah, insight section, sorry, the analysis section. And on that list, you will find market calendar, especially for the guys who are who have live accounts. You're the ones who have this support, a live and active account, you have this support. Um Uh, just coming through. Hey, hey, how are you? Hey, guys. Um, yeah, I think we didn't have as many questions, unless if you have some addition, some. Uh, I think the, the rest relates to mapping out how the announcement went and how mm -hmm. the charts looked like. Because I'm sure you can go back in time. And for example, if you identify one item, for example, CPI, Mm -hmm. You can go back in time, maybe on your USD or on gold, see how the market reacted. With time, you'll start seeing a pattern, and you, it's something you might probably want to to explore further because news trading is one of the few things that many traders avoid. Yet, some of the most profitable traders just rely on news to to make a living. 
yeah, events when they come up, they actually cause high volatility. And if you can catch a move with a high volatility, then it means high profitability. Yeah. yeah someone but someone again, is asking if you can use a straddle. Yeah, actually, that's one of the strategies that you need to 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 use. Okay, one best strategy. Yeah, straddle is something you can use. That's where you're placing your um pending orders on both sides of um of the chart, so that whichever direction the market the price spikes then you're in um it's it's a strategy you can use yes but sometimes you might have both orders taken all right so you have to be really very fast fact that if one order is taken right if if the price spikes the upside and the long position is taken or is open then you have to close the other one to avoid a situation where you're caught in between uh a buy and a sell and it's just like you can't make any profit okay but yeah it's one of the strategies that you can use in trading michael good one yeah but just to 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 take note of, uh, to point out one thing is sometimes you might have slippage uh in the markets and this is a normal market phenomena and it's something to take into consideration especially if you're pen you're placing pending orders but one of yep. the best uh, straddle uh, setups is when the market is very uncertain. And how do you know the market is very uncertain? If you're moving in a very tight range before the news, that's when you know you should expect huge spikes in either direction. If the market is trending in one way or another, then traders already expect and they're highly convinced that probably, for example, if inflation is going to come up higher, then sometimes you'll find the market is already trending as though buyers want to take the market higher. So these are some of the things you look at before you place your setup uh, before the news. Exactly. So Kara is asking whether we have one best strategy that works in trading. You have one, Sam? As in one approach to trading? One best strategy that works in uh, in trading. I think I think uh, trading is uh, you have your tools, which are your strategies, and then you have a market. So you're trying to map what works best at that time. Yeah. So how I can approach this question, the way I understand it, is there is one best strategy. I mean, um, there's no one fit all strategy, maybe for all the instruments, right? And there's no one fit all strategy for every trader. There is a trader who like, uh, for example, being in the market when there is high volatility. There's another trader who sees high volatility as high risk. They don't want that time. So different strategies will work best in different um, market conditions and they will work best depending with who is using them as well because I might give you my strategy and might not be able to use it properly. So what I say is the strategy which you have, try to master it in terms of which are the best conditions? Which instrument does it best work on, right? And which time of the day? Because different times of the day, um, you have different conditions in terms of volatility, right? Such that you're able to get, you know the best times to get the best out of that strategy. For me, every strategy wins in the market, but it doesn't give you the same results. There's a strategy which will give you a very big move, but then might take very long. There's a strategy which can give you um, a very small move, but then it will keep on giving you signals every now and then. So it depends, yeah? So the best, what I can say, well, I can answer this one. Every strategy is good, but you need to understand the best times it work, the best conditions, and um, just use it in the most appropriate way yeah i think there are, there are two things that come out clearly number one is uh your risk to reward number two is your accuracy or your win rate mm -hmm. so one of them has to be extremely high for you to have a good strategy so either you're trading a strategy where your losses tend to be small but many but when uh when you make a profit it covers for almost all the losses you've made that means you have a healthy uh, reward to risk ratio and on the other hand 
you can have a strategy that uh, your win rate is very high. That means the chances of you being right per trade is close to say 90 or 95 percent but then when you take a hit it takes a considerable chunk of your your profits so now you either have a balance between the two or you be extremely good at one sure sure i mean that that was a little bit um out of um the news discussion but it's always good uh, if you have questions, we'll always look at them. Um, anything, I don't think whether there's anything around trading with the news. So for me, my parting shot will be as a trader, make sure you understand when we have events coming up, either to take advantage of the volatility or um, very importantly, to manage risk, avoid those um, spikes that might surprise you in the market. Sam, you have something to wrap it up? Uh, I think that's it. Oh, one more thing mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. with spikes. Mm -hmm. It's good to look at the, 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 the market you're trading. If, for example, I'm trading your USD, mm -hmm. then I know those markets cannot be, uh, they, they have a lot of traders. So one big player cannot really skew how prices move. Uh, other than trading an, an exotic or something that is has very low volume, that can mm -hmm. easily misbehave in that it can, can either have really large spreads or something like that. So it's good to look at the assets you're trading, make sure there's a lot of volume that brings about stability so that you're not, you, you don't get caught off guard. Sure, sure. So with that, um, I think, oh, we have one question here from Tony, I think I can answer that one and then you call it um, a session. So Tony is asking, how do you know the outcome of the news? So the outcome of the news, you wait for the release. That's when you get the, the, the report, the actual report coming up. And then the reaction of the market, you actually will be able to see a spike on um, either the price going up so fast or going down so fast on the chart. So how you know the releases, look at the calendar. You'll be given the dates and the time when the release is coming up. Yeah. So you wait up until that time is up and then you find the actual report coming up. Before that, traders will use or will compare the previous news yeah. reports and the expectations. Because, um, because your, best, your, best guess, your best guess is what happened the previous times. Yeah, yeah. That's so what traders can, use to, yeah, that's what traders can, use to price have a, a, a Maybe a journal or a place you've recorded previous impacts. And it's a very simple thing to do. You just look at the number of pips the market moved, either in the first minute or in the first five minutes, and then you see the deviation in the expectation. And you do that with uh, a number of news releases, and then you sort of get a pattern. And that can guide you on what to anticipate. It's the best estimate or it's the best guess of what you think is going to happen before a news a news release yeah sure so um it seems like questions are coming up now um should you do fundamental analysis daily well it's important every single day you have to analyze the market do technical analysis so for the fundamental analysis it's good you check the calendar um, before you start trading so you know what to anticipate and um yeah even at the end of the day so you prepare for the next day. So it's good, always good to do the fundamental analysis every single day. Yeah. yeah. So Daniel is asking as well, is it good to rush into the market after the news? You can pick that some. Yeah. Um, just before we get into that, the, mm -hmm. the one for fundamental analysis daily, we have, we have, you have to know the theme in the market. The theme is the overall global fundamental or macro fundamental uh, theme. In this case, it can be something that is affecting the market over a long period of time. For example, we have the, the whole situation in Europe where the Euro fell below a, do a dollar to the Euro parity. And that took a couple of months, yeah? But you can still see it's news that has been affecting the Euro over a long time. The other one is the interest rates that have been affecting the dollar ever since January. So you need to know the global macro theme, which is the overarching theme that is still driving the markets 
and that one you don't need to do it daily, but then there are these small themes that occur on a weekly basis or on, on a daily basis, and they usually become more important as an important event comes closer. So it's good to break down different uh, themes. You have your global themes or global, I like to call them global macro because they last for a couple of months. We have items that last for a couple of weeks and we have items that will last two, three minutes and the market is back to normal. So it's good to know the differences in what you're trying to look for. And then is it good to rush into the market after the news? And that depends on your strategy. Um, if you do understand, for example, the, the some news releases, sometimes the market tends to overreact. The way humans do, you find something like uh, anything and then you hear the news and then you overreact. So sometimes prices tend to overreact. And most of the times you have prices reversing because the market had overreacted to a certain piece of information. That happens. But then you need to know this is an overreaction or this is an actual uh, reaction to the news. So you, at the end of the day, you need to go back and, and see how the news impacted the asset in the past and use that as a best guess, guess for what's going to happen. So it depends on your strategy at the end of the day when it comes to news. Mm -hmm. Well covered, well covered. So um, I don't think we have any other questions, Sam. Um, so I think we will, we will wrap it up. Um, thank you so much guys for taking time to attend. Yeah, these sessions are really very important. They give you mentorship. They help you um, get better equipped to trade in these markets. So with uh, that long or short discussion, um, thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.